they don't sleep two, three nights and they will be studying hard, mugging up all those derivations. So, <coughs> once I did a small activity like this, I told them that in this hour, I want you to write a letter to someone whom you like most. You can write it to your mother, your father, if you want you can write it to me. Okay, so you write a letter. And what to write in the letter, I will go on dictating. So this, this was done in one of my statistical mechanics course. So I said, what you think statistical mechanics would have been before I started this course? I write about one or two lines about it. Then I said, what is your opinion on the definition of a state of a statistical mechanical system? And I told them, if you don't know anything, plainly write that I don't know, I'm not able to write anything in this section. That's fine. And then I wrote, I, I, all those technical things, I put it in slightly non-technical terms. Why do you think all states are equally probable if energy is conserved? Something like that you, and uh, so I get some five, six, five, six uh, titles. And then they have written, some people have written well for five answers. And then uh, some people have, did not remember anything. So the whole one hour I spent asking them to write answers for various sub subtitles that I have given. Then I told them, you have completed the internal exam. You can submit if you want. I will evaluate and give you. So essentially, these are the questions which I am planning to ask in tomorrow's exam. But they were not tensed because they were writing a letter. They were not tensed. They were happy. They were laughing. And the result of this activity I found was that they were focused. Essentially what these topics told them is what is the outline of the syllabus for the next exam, coming, upcoming exam. Now by answering these questions, they actually understood what they know and what they don't know. So they went back and read only that portion where they had doubt. So the preparation happened to be very good because they have actually focused. Now this is a very nice way of preparing for the examination because in the examination, when you read, when you study the entire textbook, a question is asked, fishing out this from that uh, syllabus is difficult. But if you if you have an outline, so I am going to ask, so how to, how to solve, um, how to obtain selection rules of this process. So I am going to only look for what to do for that. So we have to have questions in mind before we prepare, even for the preparation of the examination. So we should have questions in mind. This is called active learning, it is not passive. That is why in the beginning of the lectures, I ask them to write down the questions so that they will be constantly vigilant about getting answers for their questions. So this is what we call as active learning. So one has to inculcate this habit of active learning. And this is very, very useful in uh, both increasing the grasping ability as well as increasing the retention. One last ex experiment I would like to mention, which I did uh, with a set of students a couple of years ago. Normally what we do is that if someone wants to prepare for these uh, competitive examinations, we try to tell them how to solve problems and uh, for example, <coughs> Naina Muhammad was a part of this exercise in Chennai and we go on train them to do problems from this book, that book and then so this problem solving is emphasized completely. Now 
actually if you do a problem this as teachers you all might have experienced if you do some problem on the board it appears it is easy but when you do something on your own you will find it difficult so doing how many our problems on the board giving lectures on the board is not going to help so I had chosen a set of 15 students. I, I, I did not choose. In fact, they have formed a group. And then they came to me that we want to prepare for these examinations, so we want your help. Previous to that year, I used to give some special lectures, evening 5 to 7, like that. People who want to prepare for these examinations, I will sit down and solve so many problems, teach them how to solve, all that. But we hardly got much result. It's not that they didn't learn anything, but it was not adequate to cross those milestones. So this time I said, I'm not going to give you any lectures. I told them that uh, I will give you a set of 40, 50 problems. These are multiple choice questions. I think we started with classical mechanics. I gave them. I said, one week time you take, you all sit together, discuss. Whatever problems that you can solve, you solve. But be sure that if you are not able to solve a problem, I want to hear from you what is the difficulty. State the difficulty and identify what concepts you need more to solve that problem. So I expect you to state this when you come to me for discussion next time. So after a week, they have, I think, solved only some four or five problems and then they came to me. Then they stated the difficulties. Then I gave only clues. I did not solve any of those problems. I gave only clues. And then they went back. And another week, I think they solved almost 40, 45 out of 50 problems. So what I learned from this exercise is that if <coughs> they know what they want to know, when we teach, it is learnt very quickly and effectively. In, when they solve these problems, when they ask a question, why I am not able to solve this problem, they will come to realize what they will know, what they do not know. And they can clearly ask, when a question is clearly asked, it can be clearly answered. Okay? <coughs> Incidentally, in that batch of 15 students, about 10 students cleared gate that year. And they continued the same thing because this, this uh, set of problems was very successful. They were all happy. They continued this exercise in quantum mechanics, other subjects also. And their preparation was good. So <coughs> the only thing I learned from this exercise is that if you make people ready to absorb what you teach, then absorbance or the grasping is maximum. So by making them solve these problems beforehand, I have ensured that whatever I teach after their solution, they will understand it much better. Okay, so this is the uh, experience which I have over some years. I may not remember all, but whatever I remembered, I shared. So if you have any questions or if you have any comments, <laughs> Generally, I don't uh, have any specific method. Sometimes I make notes, sometimes I don't make notes. But uh, most of the times, uh, I spend uh, at least equal amount of time for preparing for one hour, at least one hour preparation time. Even though, I, even though I know, but I will spend, for example, for today's six hours, last night I spent five hours. Okay, it's not that this material is new or I'm teaching it for the first time, but still you require that much amount of time for planning and execution of this. And uh, every time, I, I, do not, I do not make notes because 
every time I seem to learn more when I prepare fresh. And my teaching is somewhat different every time. I feel if I, if I prepare notes, then my wave function is collapsed. Right? So <laughs> I thought I will uh, not do that. So I don't prepare notes. But most of the times, I re-prepare every time so that I will appreciate the subject from, because from last year to this year, I would have learned something in some other subjects here, there, and there will be connection to this subject. So all this acquired knowledge will help me to appreciate the subject better and present it better. So <laughs> it, it, it takes a lot of time, but since I have no other work, I keep doing it. It doesn't matter, I think. For me, it looks like language is not a problem. You teach completely in Malayalam also, it doesn't matter. So I think language is not, because I have, I have uh, <coughs> worked with students who cannot speak English. In those days, when I cannot speak Tamil. <laughs> but we, I think whatever I taught, they understood and <laughs> Now, of course, I can reasonably speak Tamil, but uh, those days, when I, in, the, in the beginning when I came to Tamil Nadu, I did not know Tamil, but I all trained students who cannot speak English. Uh, they are all doing very well in <coughs> various places now. All of them are outside Tamil Nadu, incidentally. So I think language is not, in my opinion, language is not very... I, uh, suppose if you are able to communicate physics in a better way in mother tongue, I think it's fine. It's, it should be done that way. But uh, in, one, uh, in one sense, if you make people do everything in English, it is good if they go out. For example, they may not be in Kerala all the time. Maybe after BSc, they go to, uh, for example, outside Kerala. Then they will, be have, they will have to because I remember uh, some students cannot cope up with English. They come outside Kerala or even Tamil Nadu if they go outside. I also was like that when I went to Karnataka to do my MSc. So I, f I found it was difficult because we don't speak English in our own state, right? So in cities it is a different thing, but if you are in a village then you don't typically speak English. So that was also the case with me. Half, uh, almost a semester I did not speak English. I was trying to learn and then after that. <coughs> so I think language shouldn't matter much. Do you think that to follow some textbooks is maybe better? I, like I yeah, I think it is better. But usually, in my case, uh, I usually I'm not following a particular book in any course that I teach, because I feel somehow um, <coughs> some things are good in one book, some things are good in another book. So I seem to take good things from various books and teach. But even then, you can mention this is from this book, this is from this book. But if you have, if you, for example, you write your own proof, which is not there in any book, and you think that is better than all other books, then you can uh, say this is the best proof available. <laughs> Writing doesn't come naturally to me, so it will be a Herculean task if I have to write. <laughs> so, hope I have communicated something which uh, is different or new. I, I want to say one more thing. I think this is the last thing I want to say. <coughs> As a teacher, I always felt that when the total control is not with me, the only thing that pays is the patience. You have to be patient. 
Students are students. We cannot change them. We were also like that when we were students. 